Welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and project number two in the Plastic Models for Beginners series and in this one shall be continuing on on the SDKFZ 222 by Tamiya. So all the construction has now been completed and it is time for priming the model. So this video is going to deal with priming. Um, actually I'm going to talk about prep first then I'm going to talk a little bit about the airbrush and uh, see how much time we have left and then get on with priming and painting. So first thing is getting all the parts prepped for uh, painting. Now obviously when you have something like this it's pretty much ready to go just a matter of painting it or uh, priming it or, and or painting it um, so that's ready to go smaller parts you need to do something different with and there's a number of different ways and I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing on this particular kit um, for the smaller parts so this part here um, I will be using a clamp to hold this while it is painted. And this clamp consists of an alligator clip and a short piece of wood dowel. Wood dowel is really cheap at the hardware store or home center. The clips are also very cheap um, and they work really well. Number, the thing I like about these kind of clips is they have a really small clamping surface so you can clamp really small parts and, uh, and the spring is soft enough where it's not really going to damage the plastic so just clamp that onto this bottom lip right here of the turret ring and it is ready for to be uh, primed and then painted. Um, so for the rest of the parts like for the uh, main gun assembly I'm using the same type of deal here. This is an old uh, um, barrel for a main gun. I believe it was for the uh, Panther I built some time back, but it doesn't matter. Fits in there nicely. Hold that part ready for paint. Uh, small items like this shovel, I am using. what I have shown before, paper tack, tiki tack, poster board tack, whatever. It's got a lot of different names depending on the brand. This is a local hardware store's um, that's supplied by Ace Hardware. It's their brand. They're all virtually the same. Some might have a little bit different formulation. Some of them are gray, some of them are blue. This one here works fine and the store brand is generally cheaper than a national brand say like 3M or something like that. But I just take a toothpick slash cocktail stick and put a little piece of the paper tack, poster tack on the end and in this place where uh, it doesn't matter if it doesn't get painted because it's not going to be seen stick it right on there then I can prime and paint this. Is it really necessary to prime and paint a smart part this small? Probably not but uh, I'm doing it just for illustration purposes and I want to get a good coat of primer on it. Uh, same thing goes for the wheels. Now some wheels especially by model companies such as Tamiya will have these poly sleeves inside the wheel part there so they'll slide on the axle and be able to spin freely. This one's made a little bit differently, so I'm going to do down something different. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the same stuff, the blue tack, toothpick, and punch it right in there, which is going to serve two purposes. It's going to hold the part for painting, and it's also going to keep paint from getting into the contact point where cement attaches this to the axle of the vehicle. Uh, is it really necessary to keep that clean like that? Not really, but I like to do it. 
because I like bare plastic on bare plastic whenever possible uh, for cementing. So the wheels are ready. Spare tire cover, it's got a peg in the back, so again, I can use mm -hmm. one of these alligator clips on a stick. Okay, so that's ready to go. Uh, the seats for the main gun assembly, I'm doing the same thing with the blue tack and the toothpicks. Uh, then I have the four mud guards. So I'm getting some more of my little clips and sticks. I'm going to clamp it on the portion that is going to be cemented. Again, it doesn't cover very much room. Not much space on there, so it'll be easy to paint all around it. And if any touch-ups needed, it'll be very, very little to be touched up with a brush. Same there. And just be careful and make you have make sure you have a good grip because you don't want this part to go flying off into oblivion. It's not clamped all the way. Okay. Uh, I am also going to put. I'm not. Okay, so this is ready to go as well. So all the parts are now ready to be primed and painted. So. What do you do with the parts after you've primed and painted them? You can do a couple things. Say this is the edge of a table, you can set them on the edge of a table or on the edge of something while they dry. Using acrylic paints or just about any kind of paints are going to dry really quick anyway and you can even set them aside. Um, there's also this which is made by Tamiya and it comes in a kit that has this and this. Uh, my local retailer it was about $25. You probably find it cheaper online but with shipping it may come out more, I don't know. But this is pretty handy because you can put something on here, such as this. And you can even use some of the, uh, this is adjustable. And using the blue tack, you can use it to set something larger on paint all that, do something else, give it time to dry, come back, turn it over, and then paint the rest of it. That way you're not getting your hands all over it. It's keeping it all nice, neat and tidy. Same with this. You can set it on here. Or a lot of times I'll use this for after parts have been sprayed. Then I can spear them into here so they can dry and they're staying up out of the way. So that's just another little tip on how to dry the parts. All right, so the parts are now all prepped and ready to go for priming or painting. So I'm going to stop the video right here, change the desk around a little bit, come back to the priming part. All right, so I've got the first part here is uh, set up and ready to go. I am using Steinle Res Primer for this particular project. Um, I also have some Vallejo primers and they work they work pretty good as well but I'm not using those in this case. Steinle Res is the one I've been using lately. I like it and I'm going to keep using it um, especially for doing base coats like this. Now the question is, do you need to prime or do you not need to prime? Well, some people don't think you need to, some people do. Um, I like to prime just because I like a nice solid base before I do paint. And primer sometimes allows you to see anything you might have missed, like uh, cleanup points, uh, seams, residual sprue gate plastic where the part was connected to the sprue um, stuff like that I also like having this for the paint to go over just because 
for me it seems to stick a little bit better. I've never had any paint peel off uh, when I've masked um, a model for painting. I've never had paint peel off uh, with the tape using primer and paint. So that's one of the reasons I do. Tons and tons of people don't use primer. I used to not use primer and it works fine. It's just I, I choose to use it and I'm, that's, so that's what I'm going to show first. So if you don't want to see priming, you can skip to the painting part later. But one thing you want to do is you want to make sure you mix your, your primer up really, really well. Because uh, if you don't, it's going to be really thin for about the first half of the bottle, and then once you get down near the bottom, it's going to be so thick it's not going to come out of your airbrush. I'm using the HPM2 Iwata because it's single action, and I can just shoot the uh, the primer on it. All right, so I'm going to load up the color cup first, obviously. Put a pretty good amount in there. I like to use my cap just in case I drop it and I don't spill it everywhere. Uh, I always make sure I have some paper towels handy and some water in case anything weird happens. And then I've also got a handy for cleanup. So, we got the primer in here. As you can see, it's coming out. Make sure it's spraying okay. Looks pretty good. And just start spraying this baby. Across. That way when I flip it around, I'll hit the stuff I missed on this side. Because this side there's a lot of gray, this side there's a lot of black. Just because of the angle in which I am spraying this. Primer also helps in case you miss any fingerprints. And that's something I forgot to mention. Is you want to make sure your model's nice and clean. No oily fingerprints or residues on it, you can use uh, isopropyl alcohol <clears throat> to give it a wipe down to make sure <clears throat> you don't end up with any weird fingerprint kind of things going on. Because those will show up in painting and weathering. And they're not pretty. There's nothing worse than getting a nice paint job finished and discovering there's a nasty old fingerprint. Okay, so that, the bottom is done, so I'm going to set that aside. It will dry fairly quickly, so I'm going to move on to the other parts. I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to demonstrate just for a few minutes. Just to show how easy it really is. how nice an airbrush can be for building models. Now most of these acrylic primers nowadays are very forgiving. You know, if you get pretty crazy and you see it start to puddle up a little bit, just stop, move on to another part, and it generally levels itself out. I don't know how they make this stuff, but it makes it really nice. You just get a little heavy handed. It'll work out just fine. Okay, I'm going to do this one wheel, and then I'm going to uh, see. It's nice to be able to turn it around on the stick. Keep your fingers from getting all gooped up with uh, primer. So that one's done. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of uh, the wheels. 
um, and all these the rest of these small parts, and then I will come back. All right, everything's all primed, and now time to clean the airbrush. I'm gonna do this real briefly. I'm not gonna go into a lot of blabbing about it, but um, just give you a quick rundown on what I do cleaning up my airbrush. Now, there's a lot of uh, people that sometimes, you know, they'll demonstrate their airbrush brush cleaning technique and they really focus and emphasize that you don't hardly need anything as far as cleaners and stuff like that to clean it. You know, like a thimble full is plenty, blah, blah, blah. I'm not one of those people. Better safe than sorry, I say. So the first thing I do, because it's acrylic, you'll get a layer of dried primer in there. I squirt some of the cleaner in, which in this case is Vallejo Airbrush Cleaner. Even though I'm using Steinle Res, it works fine. And I rub it around and get all the chunks out because you don't want to be blowing chunks through the end of your airbrush because it will clog it. So I get the big chunky stuff all scrubbed up. And dump it out. Then I use a piece of paper towel and clean it out really good. I'll use a cotton swab in the bottom and look and make sure there are no chunks inside of that color cup. Then Pour some of my cleaner in there. I shut the, I shut it down. Then I take just a little bit of cleaner in the end of the Q-tip cotton swab, and I just spin it around on the end, carefully on the needle, and the inside of this, the part where the. Uh, or the uh, paint and everything comes out just to make sure that's all nice and clean and as you can see more of the uh, primer has dissolved in there so this cleaner is now dark again it's not clear like it was a minute ago so I'm going to dump that out some people may say it's wasteful but you know what a ten dollar bottle of uh, airbrush cleaner that lasts a really long time is cheaper than an airbrush replacing an airbrush or even parts on an airbrush all right so I put some more of the cleaner in it I back it off a little bit like I'm gonna spray some paint then I back flush it so I cover the end with a paper towel put another paper towel over top to keep it from blowing everything out but basically what it does it forces air back through the channel and blast any of the uh, see it's dark again so it's getting some more of that stuff out now there are those that don't like back flushing okay I do I do it and I've never had any trouble some people have had trouble but even Badger airbrushes in their tutorial videos they recommend back flushing so I figure I don't know, maybe they're trying to get extra sales on parts or something, but if they recommend it, it's good enough for me. And I have not had any trouble yet with it. Back flush a little bit more. And that's a little bit a little bit better as far as being clear. So we're getting close to being done here. So again, I'm going to wipe it out. And a little bit of residual, just spray it on there. It should be coming out clear, and hopefully no chunks. So I'm going to put a little bit more in there. I'm going to close this up. The reason I do that is I, I open it all the way, and I close it. And what that does is, if any of the, if there's anything in the back part of the channel where the the uh, needle comes through in the back of the color cup 
it'll sometimes force what a little bit of primer or paint or whatever it's in there and there was nothing in that one so that's good so then what I'm going to do and you can spray this outside I use one of these this has got a filter here and a nozzle here uh, or a intake here and I you just all you do is just put this in here and spray it into the jar this allows the air to come out as you're spraying maybe a little bit of smell but not bad especially with acrylics but it blows it all in here it doesn't create any mist or any overspray or anything like that okay and that is a clean airbrush okay that's all there is to it now again this is one of those items it's an extra that I recommend since I'm using it I obviously recommend it these are also about 25 bucks so just you know if you want to use these kind of things you can't really afford them at the time they're things you can add later um, but they do help so that is the primer portion so I'm gonna let my primer cure and then come back and begin painting all right so I have got the model primed with the Steinle Res primer uh, top and bottom and all of the associated parts wheels main gun everything so it is all ready to go so this video um, on priming has pushed about 20 minutes I think so I'm gonna call this video quits and come back right away with a paint video where wherein I'll start uh, painting um, painting the kit so um, with that I'm gonna end it here again as always if you have any questions or comments um, suggestions whatever put them in the comments below and uh, I will get back to you as quickly as I can so that's it for plastic models by regular dude and plastic models for beginners kit number two the SDKFZ 222 so with that I will see you all later